Let me introduce you to the WebTac tactical shotgun from Webley and Scott built in conjunction with the Husan arms of Turkey so it is built in Turkey but Webley have had a lot to do with this uh, box fed semi-automatic shotgun now you've had a bit of a sneaky peek uh, look at this thing in uh, my range time video if you're subscribed uh, make sure you are if you're not um, yeah I've done the range time video of this thing testing this thing to the max and what I've got to say guys is I am impressed very impressed okay right so before we get into all that good stuff um, I'll just throw out some specs now basically semi-automatic shotgun um, it's got a long barrel obviously for UK you know to meet the uh, the laws so the barrel is 24 inches long but it's semi-automatic um, it's got a 10 shot um, magazine here gas operated um, 24 inch barrel like I said overall length is 44 and a half inches or 113 centimeters depending on you know how far you've got the stock sort of adjusted um it's weighing in at nine and a half pounds or four and a half kilos that's including including the empty uh, magazine okay you get three uh, chokes with it and also which is cool you get the door buster with it as well which is a real nice sort of uh, extra that you get in with it open sights as standard as well so it comes with that so pretty pretty damn impressive but let's first of all we'll talk about the magazines um because it's quite interesting now what i am going to do guys just to just to sort of throw out a bit of uh well something a little bit different just to get i'm going to compare it to the popular typhoon f12 okay so but first of all let's just talk about the magazine and uh, just put that down out of the way. So, magazine, pretty, pretty damn solid. This, um, the polymer, um, pretty, pretty lightweight, and they've got like a, a metal, feels like steel um, sort of top bit to them. Unless that goes all the way through, and this is just a like a, a cover. It probably that is, probably is the case. Um, but the pretty good magazines they were a little stiff the only I mean that's the newness I guess my only gripe with these magazines was and I've got to compare it again let me just grab one to a Typhoon F12 magazine the only thing I, I weren't so keen about on these is there's no holes by the way they are dummy rounds so don't worry and um, there's no holes in it where you can sort of see how many rounds you've got in like you get on the the F12's magazine, but <laughs> this is a good, good, a good thing as well. This is a, a good, uh, a good thing that I found out. If you own an F12 and you want something like this, and there's a good reason to own one of these web tacks as well, which you've got to watch the full video. I'll, I'll explain that. But the um, the F12 magazines fit, okay? They don't drop out quite as easy is the, uh, the web tax own um, magazines but these do fit okay I'll demonstrate shortly but let's just talk about the rest of this shotgun so so basically it's gas operated slightly different to the F12 I know I'm comparing it to the F12 but that is the F12 is the pretty much the most popular box fed uh, on the market in the UK at the minute so it's, it's a good sort of comparison now the F12 I'll just sort of explain the piston sort of run, I'm just dropping a magazine um, the piston does sort of run um, on the outside of the barrel so to speak so if, I, if you just look there in the guts well, you can't really see it but as I well you can there look as I pull the char charging handle all the sort of gas bits so to speak are sort of round the barrel okay whereas the let me just get that out of the way because i'm gonna run out of room here whereas the web tack 
is pretty much like this Beretta, okay? It works pretty much the same. It's all underneath the barrel, okay? Just sort of show you this Beretta just as an example. It is basically a normal, I say normal in inverted commas, a normal <laughs> semi-automatic shotgun dressed up in a AR platform tactical. Okay, so anyway, let's talk about this thing in some detail. So now that you you sort of know a little bit about it, <laughs> but I'm still going to compare it. So keep watching. I'm I'm still going to compare it. But let's go. Let's take it from the top then. Right. And so first of all, looking at the uh, butt stock, it, AR style. So it's adjustable. You've got, it's ambidextrous as well, which is a winner because I'm lefty, as you probably know. Um, I do like this butt start. You've got an adjustable um, cheek piece here. I can undo it. I don't really mess about a bit, to be, to be honest. But yeah, you've got like um, what is it? A what? It's, it, it's quite adjustable. Um, let's, there we go. Look. So you can adjust the cheek piece. Sort of get it quite high if you want. I pretty much just ran that sort of as it was. I'll leave it like that for a minute. Um, you know, it was com comfortable enough for me. And then moving along, obviously, like I said, you've got, you know, it is adjustable for sort of length of pull. Um, we'll keep it short though, just I'm short on room here at the minute. And then moving along to where it sort of meets the uh, the receiver. Sling swivel points there, you know, ambidextrous ones. So one either side, which is cool. And then moving on to the actual receiver itself, aircraft aluminium uh, in this black finish, uh, really nice. And what I've noticed as well, now we'll sort of jump into this sort of while we while we mentioned the receiver. This thing is so much thinner that I'm not going to be able to balance it, balance these guns like this. But it's so much thinner than the F12. Okay, let me just juggle these shotguns. Hang on, I've not got enough, enough hands. So, hang on, <laughs> without dinking anything. So there, if you can sort of see that, I don't know if you can really see it very well. It's so much thinner than the F12. It feels like it is anyway. It probably doesn't really look it there. Um, the F12, I know I've got this, um, this, sort of big magwell uh, on the F12 but I don't know with the with the web tack it just feels more feels more sort of military if that makes sense um, it feels more sort of M16 like um, whereas the F12 just seems a bit a bit more bulky you know a bit more it's definitely I'd say heavier uh, the F12 is but I don't know the the web type. It just feels I don't know. There's something as soon as I as soon as I got this thing out of the box when it was sent to me, I was like, oh, I really like that. And I did say at the start of the range time video um, that I loved the feel of it before I had even shot it. You know, um, so I was like, oh god, I hope this thing shoots as good as it feels and as good as it looks. Um, but uh, it, it's definitely more slimline than the F12, without doubt. So I'm just adjusting this stock, there we go. So it's way more, I don't know, it's just more, it feels more pointable. And to me, it feels more comfortable. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what it is, it's kind of hard to explain. It's just, I don't know, it just feels more military-like, more, more M16-like than, than the F12. Um, so moving along to the pistol grip, nothing really sort of you know major to talk about pistol grip, AR style. Um, you know, you, I'm sure you can swap that out to sort of any AR style pistol grip. It is rubberized, comfortable. Um, when I sort of say AR, you know, and this is kind of like an AR platform, this this shotgun is it won't strip down like a conventional AR so there's no pins you know to sort of break open the upper from the lower I believe you have to sort of take the, the stock off and go in through the fake buffer tube to basically 
um, break it open. Um, but if you do want to sort of field strip it, it's just a case of get. I'm not going to do it, just to sort of save time. But you get this wrench that's supplied, and you basically just crack it open with this takedown nut there. Just get that and crack it open, and it'll sort of basically just strip down like a like that Beretta, basically, like I've just shown you, like a conventional um, semi-auto. Now. Uh, Moving on to, whew, I'm out of breath through holding these shotguns. Let's take a, take a minute. Oh, getting old, guys. That's what it is. Getting weak, I think. All this shooting, and you think I'd, uh, I'd have a bit more sort of, um, I don't know, get up and go about me. But I don't know. It's, just, it's this hot weather we're having at the minute. I use that as an excuse. It's this hot weather and all the testing that I've had to do. Yeah, let's use that as an excuse. <laughs> right. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, the rest of the receiver, um, like I said, AR sort of in style. Um, Skeletonised where the magwell is, which is really nice. I like that. That looks cool. Really does look cool. Um, you've got like your sort of um, how, how do you how do you say it? sort of all in one um, trigger guard. The trigger now is obviously. A conventional trigger not like the typhoon where it's a straight one i find it a bit more comfortable if i'm honest um but i don't know all the f12 guys are going to be going mad at me they're like oh rack and load you were you were an avid f12 fan but mm, guys I, I really like this thing sorry really really like it um so so yeah the receiver sort of it, usual controls um let's let's just cock it open like that so there's the um the bolt uh, pull back breech open now it is kind of ambidextrous so you can either push this button down like so or let's just cock that up back open or you can sort of hit that lever there which obviously does the same so you've kind of got two you know an ambidextrous style um, bolt release there which again is a nice nice feature standard sort of AR um, ambidextrous safety catch uh, no really sort of nothing really fancy about that um, myself I'd probably want Webley and Scott if you're listening I probably just want that a little bit of grip on that. I found it a little bit slippy, but but phew, nothing major, nothing major at all. Mag release is that button there, so you can sort of see that working uh, on the other side when I press it. There's your mag release. Like I said, the magazines do drop out of this, um, you know. So if you want to do some sort of real fast reloads, you've only got to hit that hit the mag release and the gravity will just make these things just drop out so yeah the magazines go in pretty damn easy as well just give them a bit of a slap and they're in well, that went in properly there you go and once they are in they're pretty damn rigid um you know no sort of wobble on them or anything um but oh, it always makes me smile when you see a big 10 round magazine in there a shotgun like this oh, so cool when you uh, press the magazine release it almost sort of kicks it out a little bit if i if i obviously was holding that the other way out other way up sort of facing down it literally just spit it out basically so it's that easy to sort of you know take the mags in and out um so i was quite impressed with that didn't really do a great deal of sort of rapid mag changes um but uh, i didn't have any issues with sort of getting the mags in and out or anything while we sort of mention the mags i'll demonstrate with the uh with the f12 magazine um i've got some dummy rounds here in there three three dummy rounds so don't worry um my missus is downstairs watching coronation street so Trust me, they're, they're uh, dummy rounds. Was, it'll sort of upset her evening if they're not. So there's an F12 magazine in. And just to show you that they do um, work. 
chambered one, no problem. And then I'm holding it the wrong way up. Eject. Okay, so no, no sort of real problem there um, with the magazines. Um, but like I say, are you going to use an F12 magazine in um, a tack? Oh, I just locked it forward. Uh, probably not, you know, unless you own an F12 and you want one of these as well. Um, it's it's a case of you know spare magazines, I guess. But my only issue with um, with the magazines is I don't know whether it's to do with the magazines or the internals of of the shotgun itself is it won't lock open on the last shot um, which is a shame you know because you know you soon sort of lose count when you're having so much fun um, you know when you when you fired your last shot you know your 11th is click nothing um, so that's probably I don't know a little gripe of mine. I mean, interestingly, then, I, I, I don't know whether it did. I wonder if it locks open with an F12. Let's just try it with an F12 mag. So let's pull it back. See, that's locked open on an F12 mag. That's interesting. It's locked open on the magazine. Let's just close that up. Or has it? Oh, guys, when I, use, when I do this sort of stuff, they usually sort of fail on camera. Don't quote me on that. Um, I should really just sort of try it uh, out in the field. You see, it's not not holding open on its own magazine. Yet when I put, I know I'm off camera, guys. Sorry. That's its own magazine, right? It's not it's not locking open on the mag. Let's take that one out, put the F12 mag in, and then cock it, and it's locking open on the mag. That's interesting. Very interesting. I might just have to try that. I am going to take this uh, shotgun out again, so I'll throw in the footage and see what my findings were of that. But it uh, looks like that will lock open on the on the last shot that's interesting on an f12 magazine yet not on its own but hey ho whatever i mean you know we can all we can all count to 10 so but anyway moving on so uh where were we we're on on the receiver so yeah look, moving on to the top of the receiver you've obviously you can see all this uh picatinny rail you know so you can throw on a red dot or something if you wanted you know um, bear in mind it is a shotgun too if you're doing loads of slug I don't know but uh, just keep those open sights pretty sort of standard um, you know I'd say sort of M16 like open sights you know they're, they're pretty cool you've got like that um, what do they call it the A, a frame is it um, M16 style open sight I mean nothing fancy or anything but they do the job you know and I found this thing to be pretty accurate with slug I didn't have to sort of mess with the with the sights or anything so that's straight out of the box so you know pre pretty cool pretty cool you know so myself I'd, I'd keep those keep those sights on I mean bear in mind the F12 does not come with sights you've got to buy your own sights so you know it's it's one of them. Now price wise, the web tag is running around the same sort of price. I think it's around the I don't like saying prices in videos because it soon becomes out of date. Um check out Highland Outdoors, that'll sort of basically um go on there because that's who's sort of basically bringing these in uh, with alongside Webley and Scott. Um but on average, I think they're around the £800 sort of mark. Available in 12, which this one is, uh, 20 gauge and 410. Now, I'm going to be uh, getting a 410 version to test. So, watch this space. Um, that will be interesting. 
Uh, that'd be very interesting with some 410 slug. Hmm. I'm liking the sound of that, but that's another video. But um, moving on, well, I keep I keep sort of getting sidetracked here. But oh, guys, this thing is so cool. I really, really do like. I've really enjoyed using this shotgun. It's been pretty damn comfortable to use as well. But moving along to the forehand, now this is what I like about this thing. It's pretty, pretty damn minimalistic. It's got like these fish gills that you can sort of see um, there. That's what I'm calling them anyway, fish, gill, fish gills. Um, I love that. I love the minimalisticness of the forehand. It's just dead comfortable, dead comfortable. Yeah, you've got a bit of rail here. Um, you know, quad rail, sorry, not quad rail, tri rail, I guess it would be, in the six, nine, and three o'clock position. So if you want to throw on, you know, a bipod maybe, you know, if you're shooting slug or or just light, light it up with a, you know, a torch or something, that's up to you. Um, and then obviously you've got your takedown nut here, like I mentioned earlier long 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 barrel there we go we just got to the muzzle an hour later 24 inches i know uk laws but hey ho but you get this muzzle break as well reminds me of the true lock door buster it looks pretty much like it actually um mine's a little bit sharper though uh, maybe this one's the the sort of filed these ones down stop them stop you sort of shredding your gun bag when you put it away i found that with the true lot door buster so that is a real nice uh, nice option i say option a nice feature that's sort of thrown in with it you know a, a door buster muzzle brake uh, front and rear sights as standard you know pretty pretty damn cool you know you're getting i think you're getting a lot for your money but the main thing with this uh, shotgun for me is the way it feels and I've got to say it guys it feels in hand it feels better than an F12 to me it just feels I don't know it, it feels more military like it feels slimmer sleeker it performs really well um, don't get me wrong I like the F12 but this is just I don't know it's just different it's it's a lot more different than the f12 um you you've just got to hold one guys compare it compare it yourself to an f12 um this thing just feels loads loads more different now i mentioned earlier about the trigger i really like the feel of that trigger um it, there's just something about this shotgun it just feels so so comfortable in the hand uh, everything is just where it should be i mean i've got average size hands and it just feels i don't know it just feels so much more pointable than the f12 <gasps> i know shark horror shark horror but anyway while i talk about the trigger let's give it a pull just see what it's doing out of the box we are safe obviously that's cocked just for you know I, I mean i don't generally pull these sort of triggers on um these sort of shotguns but uh, why not let's just give it a pull see what it's doing but it, it does feel real nice uh, i say nice what nearly <laughs> nearly 10 pounds it don't it don't feel like that let's give it another one okay so it's got quite a heavy trigger didn't feel like that when i was shooting it okay all right and so nine and a half pound it's got a heavy trigger not really adjustable but you don't need to um trust me guys when you when you throw one of these magazines in um your mind is just saying i need to pull the trigger lots and lots of times to empty this magazine um because it's just that much fun this shotgun is to use um like i said as well earlier i used um a, a fair bit of slug rounds uh, i know if you've referred to the uh, range time video i only had three that i got footage of i only had three rounds that i got footage of um but i have used uh, a bit more um in the way of slug rounds uh, since and this thing is pretty 
pretty damn accurate. I mean, I know it's a, it's a smooth bore. Slug shot isn't amazingly accurate anyway. Um, it's not very stable as it sort of uh, goes down range. But um, I'll throw in some footage. I was, I think I've got a gong out to about 80 yards or something. Um, clanging it with this, um, you know, no problem. Yeah, I was ringing that thing like a church bell. Um, and but guys, I've had no issues with this thing. Yeah, all right, it's a semi-auto. Um, generally, if you use light loads, you're going to have you're going to have problems. Um, ain't that the same with uh, most semi-auto shotguns? If it is, you know, it doesn't matter how, how good they're built or who buy, you're going to have issues using light loads. I've found with anything sort of 32 gram and above you're not going to have problems. Um, I was, to be fair, using some pretty expensive sort of high base uh, game uh, bird shot as well. Um, God, that stuff was like nearly nine, nine pound a box here in the UK. But I had no no problems with this out of, what have I put through? I probably put through about 400 rounds. 400 rounds of um, bird shot, buck shot, slug shot, you know. Um, I've not had a single problem with this shotgun okay so that's pretty damn good you know usually you, you're going to have uh, one or two feed issues um, and uh, but no with this web tack it has run pretty pretty damn good so I'm impressed really impressed can't wait to try that 410 one out but, um, but what do you think, guys? Let's go. And, let's put it on the table with the with the F12. I mean, <sighs> ignore the fact that my F12 is in uh, desert tan because people are like, "Oh, I want the desert tan one." But <sighs> I don't know. I think they're just the two. They're different. They're both different. It, there's no doubt about it. Um, Myself, I'm I'm pretty tempted to get one of these web tacks to have alongside the Typhoon. Don't know. What do you reckon, guys? Or do you swap your Typhoon for a web tack? Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. I like them both. I do like them both. But I don't know. I've, I think for speed, if you're doing three gun or the PSG you know practical shotgun and you're using a box fed you seriously need to have a look at this web tag because it, it just feels so much lighter so much more pointable than the f12 and this is a man of experience because i own one i own one all right fair enough i've not done a lot of competition with it i've pretty much just set up my own my own sort of courses and i had fun but this thing, this web tack seems to be a lot more pointable, a lot lighter in the hand. Don't know, easier to handle. That's the, yeah. We'll put it in. We'll put it in that terminology. The web tack is easier to handle, I think. But but anyway, let's get rid of the F12 anyway because it's a web tack review, not an F12 review. If you want to see the F12 review, go through the playlist. But anyway, guys, that is it. That is pretty much um, that's pretty much where we'll leave it. Anyway, <laughs> the WebTac tactical shotgun, okay, made in conjunction with Husan. I think that's how you say it. Husan Arms in from Turkey. Webley and Scott have had a lot of input about this shotgun. Which is good, you know, a British company. You know, um, I think we need to see some of these things actually made here in the UK. That'd be uh, that'd be really cool. But another new kid on the block, guys. You know, um, as far as box feds go, I've done quite a few reviews on these things now, um, and I'm gonna say, oh, dare I say it? This is one of my favourites so far. Okay, and I'd probably, if I didn't already own a Typhoon, I'd probably go for one of these. Mm, I'm not going to say anything.
the more money products, yeah. Products that Typhoon. Oh, you didn't hear me say that. But no, guys, the web attack, seriously, seriously worth a look. Um, like I said, compare them both. Compare the, the F12, compare the web attack. I prefer the feel of this. I prefer the feel of the web tack. That's just me. Anyway, guys, that is it. That is your rack and load review of the web tack tactical box fed shotgun by Webley and Scott. That is your rack and load review. Thanks for watching. See ya.